Hey, good morning, everyone. Pastor Brett here. Um, yeah, um, just checking here. Camera tends to do the mirror thing. Um, the um, LSB, Hallelujah. let's look at it again. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. I thank you for the awesome gift of um, your word and uh, coming to us from the Hebrew and uh, the Greek um, with uh, some small portions in, um, in uh, Chaldean language, the language of the Syrian people, uh, the Babylonian people. Um, yeah, the, we thank you that your word was translated to us, um, hallelujah, in the English, um, starting with John Wycliffe. And then uh, it came through the Latin and it came through the Germanic tongues. And, and uh, yeah, our English language was created by you, obviously. Um, you're the creator and sustainer of all things. So I pray that you help us to understand your word that you've written for us, that you've told us in Deuteronomy, Lord God, uh, 29, 29, that this book, hallelujah, is meant for us to understand, that this book is meant for us to know and to be guided thereby. And I praise you and thank you that this ministry, Father, is guided by your word and your word alone, hallelujah that this ministry is um, overseen by your word and by your word alone, and that only by your word, Lord God, hallelujah, can we teach or preach anything, hallelujah. And yet, Lord God, I pray that um, the people that hear would be Bereans, that they would examine the scriptures to see whether anything that is said here is so. And we'll give you thanks and praise, Father. Help us to understand the um, translation process and um, the things that we learn through that as well. And we'll give you thanks and praise. Thank you for the ministry of John MacArthur and uh, Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California. Thank you for all the um, things that uh, have come as a result of that ministry. And Lord, we'll give you thanks and praise. Be glorified through all of this. Um, Hallelujah, we pray in Jesus' name. Uh, hallelujah, amen. I hope you said amen. Um, uh, and when I say amen, I always ask in a question form, do you agree? Um, don't say amen unless you agree. Hallelujah. I'm looking at Acts chapter 3 and 4. We're not going to read through the whole text, obviously. Um, just a couple of verses here that I noticed. And we're looking at word-for-word -word accuracy in the text. We're looking at literal word-for-word -word accuracy in the text. And so with my wife reading from the New King James Version, I, of course, always have my KJV right here. Um, you know that I'm reading through the text of the LSB, um, the Legacy Standard Bible, and I'm examining it <clears throat> for word-for-word -word accuracy within the text. Um, the LSB translates, I'm, I'm downloading now as we speak, it's downloading, I'm downloading the uh, LSB itself onto the phone, an app, and then that app would um, give me accordance. And accordance is, it, it, it's, a, it's a giant, uh, I guess, just for the sake of argument, it's a giant strong concordance. It's like a strong concordance. It's a big um, library of oh my goodness, manuscripts and and uh, um, um, their sources where they got their translation from. I want to know where. The LSB got this, and I haven't been able to find it in all of my library, um, so I want to know where they got it. I'll show you something interesting, though, as we go through. <clears throat> um, we're looking at Acts 3.16 first, and Acts 3.16 reads this way. Um, okay, so let me, um, for sake of um, argument and um, for the sake of truth, if you will, uh, John, 
uh, let's see, X uh, 3 and 16. Hey, look at that. Oh, uh, X 3 and 16 in the King James Version reads this way. Um, and his name, through faith in his name, you, you know this is talking about Jesus, right? Because in 15 it says, uh, and you killed the prince of life, with whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, 16, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So, this is... DLSB in the same verses. 15, you put to death the author of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. All right? So even that, um, the prince of life, the author of life, same thing, no difference in meaning. But here is where the issue came in. 16, and on the basis of faith in his name, whose name is that? You know who it is. Obviously, the text is obviously clear. Yet the LSB translators sought the need or desire to do this. It is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man, whom you see and know. And the faith which is through him has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. So they inserted the name of Jesus into this text. Now, does that change the meaning of the text? No. Nope. Um, is that um, in any way wrong? Nay, uh, if you're talking about literal word-for-word -word accuracy, which, by the way, Pastor John has stated on numerous occasions that the NASB is the most literal word-for-word -word accurate translation in history. The most literal word-for-word, -word, he said, in the English language. All right, so if this is the most literal word-for-word, -word, then where did you guys get that from? Um, uh, Pastor John, um, um, Pastor Chow, uh, all of you, all the professors at the LSB. I mean, yo, great job. God bless you. Love it. I'm reading it and I'm saying, you know, so far looking good. But when I encounter things like this, I want to know where you got it from. <clears throat> so what I did was I did a search. I did a search with the Stephanus 1550, Greek New Testament, all right? Stephanus 1550, Greek New Testament. And when I read Stephanus 1550 in Acts 3 and 16, I find this. Uh, um, I had it set up. And I should have kept it there. I do that. I tend to do that a lot, don't I? Um, hallelujah. X three and sixteen in the Stephanus fifteen. This is Stephanus fifteen fifty. It's a parallel version. Has as I've shown you before, the Greek New Testament on one page and the English on the other side. Um, so it's two columns, Greek and English, um, and so are English and Greek. Um, at any rate, in 3.16 it says, again, King James Version, And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith of him, the faith which is by him, hath given him perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Him, him, him. So the... Um, Where did I see, am I mixing with the other? Okay, so, well, it, it's 
here you have here you have pistai tu anamatos, all right? That's faith of the name. So faith in his name is practically incorrect, if you ask me. King James Version didn't get that correct. Tu is of or from. In the Greek, tu is of or from. It's an interjection. It, 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 it's um, Some will translate it in, of, from. I don't I believe in is inc incorrect because n, um, epsilon nu, n, is in, in, uh, sign language, in. So literally putting in, n is in, where two is of or from. We looked at that once before. Uh, is the faith of God from God or is it? in God, because if it's faith in God, then it's you placing your faith in God, as opposed to God putting his faith in you. I like the latter. God's faith was given to me. My faith that I have is not my faith in God. It's God's faith, hallelujah, that moves me to trust him. God gives me the faith to even surrender to him. Before you even surrender to him, the Lord put it in you to do so. Oh, oh yeah, I like that, huh? Sovereign God, man, thank you, Jesus, oh, yeah. And didn't violate your will to choose, because, oh, yeah. After all, you said, okay, yes, Lord, right? You made the confession, Romans uh, 10, right? And that was all the work of the Lord, his predestined plan for us. Hallelujah. Knew which way you were going to turn before you did. And so he moved everything, blocked all the left-hand doors and made you turn right. And just, you were making the decisions, but God was orchestrating it all, making sure it all went the way it was supposed to go. It's an amazing God, man. I'm thankful. Um, I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. Um, God is sovereign and in complete control. And there is no evidence in this text of the name of Jesus. Not in the Byzantine Stephanos 1550. Um, so it's, it's faith, that's, forgive that little rabbit trail. It's faith, okay, from the name or faith of the name, right? Atu tutan on theorite kai oidate estere estereome osen estereosen estereosen tu anoma. Okay, so again, it's faith um, anoma atu kai he pistis a di atu. It's faith again. In God, okay, faith in his name. Anoma is the name. You see it twice, Anamatas and Anoma. That's the name, okay? And it's the name, the name, the name. What name? It doesn't give you... What I'm looking for in this Greek text is I'm looking for the Greek Iesus. Iesus. I'm looking for Iesus. That's Jesus in the Greek and um, I'm looking for, um, uh, I'll write it down here for you. I'm looking for that name in the Greek text above my finger. All right, Jesus. All right, that's Jesus. That's the name that should be in that text, if that's right. It's not there, but this isn't the only Greek text that I would look at, okay? Because the LSB translators did not... Um, they did not translate this um, from just the... 
Um, Byzantine text, which Stephanus is. Stephanus is Byzantine, but you want 316, and you look at 316, and you see the same thing that you saw in the Byzantine text, okay? Um, Pistai tu anamatos, all right? And um, anoma atu, all right? To anoma atu ke he pistis, okay? So it's, again, faith in the name, the name that brings faith, the name that gives faith. This is what the Greek is saying in both. And so the um, modern critical text agrees with the Byzantine text in that text. Um, and so because they are in agreement, I have to be in agreement as well. So I go and I look at a few different translations. Don't you know that I find the name of Jesus only one time in all of the books and translations and everything else that I have here? The name of Jesus is only mentioned in the NI. Wow, did you say that? Wow, the NIV. The NIV is the only um, book that I've seen that uses the name of Jesus in that text. Do I have a problem with the name of Jesus? No, well, absolutely not. Did not. It's not that, and it's not even interpreting that, saying, well, look, ultimately, does this make a difference in the meaning of the text? Nope. Doesn't change the meaning at all. But I want to see why you put the name of Jesus in there. They didn't italicize it either, by the way. They, when they inserted words to clarify, like all translators have to do at times, they didn't italicize it. They do italicize when they need to italicize. This name was not italicized. The name of Jesus is not italicized, and yet they put it in as if it was literal word for word from which text? That's what I need to find out. I haven't found that out yet. Um, in all of my searching, I haven't found that out yet. So I want to close by reading my notes. Um, I said, uh, while this text clearly speaks about Jesus... For literal accuracy, the name of Jesus is not found in any manuscript that I can find. It is used in the NIV text, but this then becomes an interpretation, not literal accuracy. To the translators of the LSB, unless you can show which text you took this name literally from because i mean let's face it if you're going to use the name of jesus make sure it was there because that's the name that's above every name that at that name we are to but this is he is our lord and our god amen so if you're going to use the name of jesus you have to have seen it in some other text greek text which greek text did you get it from i want to know i want to know Literal, word-for-word -word accuracy is what I'm looking for, okay? Um, that's it for this video. Um, gone more than uh, three minutes longer than I'd like to take it, but um, I'll come back and I'll do another video. I'll upload this now, um, and uh, uh, we'll look at another text that we saw that I've yet to still get an answer for. We'll see. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great day in Jesus' name.